If you're watching this video, you probably need a little healing or a little releasing of some like energies that aren't serving you anymore. Mm -hmm. Yep, trust me, you need it. <sighs> mm -hmm. This is gonna be an emotional video. So get ready. <laughs> hey Google, play Wasted Love by Janae Aiko. Freestyle by Janae Aiko. Here it is on Spotify. So as you can probably tell, I'm a fan of Janae. So in the background of this video are going to be some singing bowls played in the note of F to correlate with your heart chakra. So while you're watching this video, you're gonna get some healing. Okay, so a video that I want to do is how to get over heartbreak and that's coming So this video is everything you're gonna feel during heartbreak So I already did some reliving by walking down memory lane and going back to how I felt when I was experiencing What I like to call the Great Depression. I know that sounds dramatic But it really was the Great Depression a lot of bad things in my life were happening at the time of my heartbreak so it was just a whole fucking wild ride. It was literally like, I just dropped out of school, quit my job, moved out of my parents' house, my childhood home of 24 years, moved out, went through like emotional turmoil, distress with my family. My boyfriend and I broke up and then my cat fucking died and then like all this shit went down and like, it was a rough time. I went like fucking broke in the beginning of the year because I had so many bills just all coming out and taxes and paying vet bills and my dying cat and it was a rough time and I got through it. So if I got through it, you can get through it and we're gonna, get into all that in another video but this video is more like me reassuring that everything you're feeling right now is fucking normal and that although you're feeling these things you won't feel them eventually like you will not feel them to the extent that you're feeling them now or at all you know what i mean like it's you're going to get through this and i just want to tell you everything you're going to feel during heartbreak you might be on like the beginning stages like there's obviously the stages of grief look at that chart too i'll put it here stages of grief are something that you experience during heartbreak i know that grief is usually associated with like the death of a loved one but i think that heartbreak is it's it's a form of grief and you're going to be going through these stages so get ready this list is a list that i compiled of all the things i felt during heartbreak and that you're probably feeling or going to feel and these are in no particular order but they are you know they were existent in my reality. So let's get into the video. Sorry for the long intro. Okay, the first thing that I could really think of was like after the breakup, um, my first feelings were like numbness, denial, a black cloud, and like severe depression. Like I remember I kept thinking like that didn't happen. Like that did not happen. There's no way that what? That didn't happen. Like, like he's gonna call me and like everything's gonna be a joke like it, this is a prank like this is i just was like no like what no it was just like this weird denial that i just like felt like we're just gonna get back together again like that didn't last that long um but like i just felt that way and it was just a weird feeling um I felt the dark cloud hanging over me of just severe depression. Everything I looked at, everything I felt, everything I, 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 it was like I wasn't a human. It was like all I was was depression. I was just a cloud of depression. And I felt numbness in the sense that like I could literally stare at a wall for like eight hours and just feel just, just I don't even know. Like I, it, it was so bad. <laughs> the problem with these feelings and thoughts is that when you feel sadness, your first thought is to call your man, to call your partner. And I'm sad, I'm crying, so I'm gonna pick up the phone and like call him and I'm like, oh wait, he is the reason I'm crying, I can't call him. We broke up, I can't do that. So you just gotta deal with all those emotions on your own. Yes, you have friends, but if you were in a relationship, you know that your best friend, confiding in her and you know, crying to her, it, it's not the same as your boyfriend, your partner, like it's just not the same because there's something so special about that bond you have with your romantic partner that you just like, you just kind of feel like you need them and when they're not there it's really fucking sad this is the one this is one of the worst ones everything is a reminder like when i tell you everything you go somewhere you go to the city you go anywhere you go to your car that reminds me of him 
Oh, he loved the smell of my car. Oh, that restaurant reminds me of him. That car, that's his car. You start seeing their car everywhere. Every fucking where you go, you see their car like no tomorrow. I'm telling you, every time I'd park, I would be parked in between two of the same car that he had. There'd be one in front of me, I'd be driving, be a red light. His car is everywhere. And that used to drive me crazy. It used to drive me crazy. One time it was actually his car, like literally license plate was him. <laughs> Fuck. Anyways. Um, yeah, he's a reminder everywhere you look. I'm sorry, I'm gonna keep saying he because that's my experience, but just know like this, you can be in a lesbian relationship, you can be in a gay relationship, you can be a man thinking about a female, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna say he because that's what I'm used to, okay? Just so you guys know. So I'm sorry if, if um, I'm not really being sensitive to that, but it, it's just my experience, so yeah. Um, my for whole place is furnished by Ikea and like other things, and he built all of it. And I remember I'd be like looking at my shelf and like, he mounted that shelf it's like oh my god and it's so hard it's so difficult because like it just sounds so silly but it's so real something really shitty that you're going to experience is the feeling of no one being able to help you like you can call your friend and cry to her but it it's not going to change anything so you just feel like what's the point in calling her so you just kind of deal with a lot of the emotions on your own because you know there's no point in talking to anybody because no one's going to get you through. There's nothing that anyone can do that's going to make this better. And that kind of forces you to isolate yourself because you're just like, how am I supposed to function when my friend's having a great day and I'm depressed? I can't tell her the same feelings that I'm feeling for the 10th time today because she has a life too. Like, it just sucks because everything's just going on around you. People are, are just going to work. People are just living their lives. People are happy. People are, and you just, you're, you feel like what you're going through is so minuscule because you're like, it's just a breakup. Everybody goes through them, but it's so much more than that. It's literally like, oh, it just hurts so bad. Like, it hurts so bad. I can't even explain it. If you've never gone through it, I pray to God you don't go through it because it's literally like, you feel like you want to crawl into a hole and be buried in it and just not come up until you feel better and you can't do that luckily for me like i didn't have to go to no actually no this kind of sucks i live alone my cat had died and i work from home i'm a youtuber so i literally had no distractions i didn't have a class to go to i didn't have anything to go to and then the pandemic hit and suddenly i'm just alone in my thoughts in my own apartment by myself and it was so fucking hard and um oh my god like honestly like i'm just telling you that like try not to isolate yourself it's really difficult so i understand if you do but just like having your friend in the other room like if you live alone or something especially like just go to your room and do your own thing but just knowing your friends in the living room is going to bring you comfort so do that as much as you can there's the stage of like all the what ifs what if i never said this what if i just acted better what if he had just done this what if we had just what if i never said this one thing that led to the discussion that caused our breakup what ifs are going to drive you fucking crazy like you are going to relive everything in your relationship and think what if what if and it's going to hurt and you're going to sit there because you have nothing else to do because you're so depressed you can barely go on your phone you're just sitting at the ceiling and just like what if this you'll be in the shower what if this and it it's just so unhealthy oh my god this is one that hurts so bad for me it's like redefining everything that i thought i knew about my future because i thought he was going to be in it and that is hard because like you think about like for example us we had a trip in a week and i kept thinking like oh but we have to go on this trip like we're obviously gonna like get back together like it was just this dumb thought and i just like i don't know i remember even after the trip i just kept thinking of all the things like oh we really wanted to go to la together we we're supposed to do that this year oh like we really like wanted to do this oh my god we're never gonna get to try that food spot oh my god like i wanted to have his babies <laughs> like everything about your future like down to dumb things and like significant things like you're gonna bounce back and forth between like all these things you thought you knew about what you were going to do with him and now they're all just poof they're gone gone no 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 wedding no this no anniversary no nothing like i would i just it's it's hard because it pops into your head out of nowhere you could literally be in the middle of a show and you'll be like fuck we were gonna do that together i guess that's not happening and it would just it keeps popping up and you're just like how many more are left like you think that's the last one you're gonna think of and then another one pops up and you're like okay come on like how many more are left are you, like i just don't get it this is a dumb one but it's valid people's opinions are going to get to you you're gonna start thinking about like i'm gonna avoid everyone 
because the second I see them, they're gonna ask how he is. And then I'm gonna have to tell them that we broke up and then I'm gonna have to explain the breakup and then I'm gonna have to relive the breakup and then I'm gonna fucking cry my eyes out again for the 30th time today. So like my suggestion is just like text your friends, be like, hey, just so you know, we broke up. I don't really feel like talking about it, but I just wanted to let you know, like don't bring it up until I bring it up. They'll understand, they will. And it's gonna be annoying because some of them are gonna like, oh, are you okay? And it's gonna be like, just let me like go through this but they're just trying to be good friends so let them do their thing um, but that one is hard because you literally feel like you have to tell people everything and then you start thinking like oh my god I have to tell my mom what she gonna think and like oh, I know this person always had a bad feeling about him and now I have to fucking tell them I broke up with him or that he broke up with me and those things like that wasn't a personal situation by the way I'm just saying that happens to people like there's a lot of different things me I'm someone that a lot of my business is on the internet because I'm a, I'm a youtuber and I post things on my social medias and stuff so like I'm just like fuck now everybody's gonna think you know like uh -huh. I was just annoyed and consumed in people's opinions that's a waste of your time this one sounds intense and i'm sorry if it's triggering but you probably i hope you don't because it's the worst feeling oh my god i'm gonna tear up you're gonna feel like you want to die like it, i'm not someone that's ever battled with like suicidal thoughts or any of that and i can't i can still say that to this day i didn't genuinely like want to commit suicide or actually die but like i literally felt like I didn't feel like living like not to, again not to the point that I wanted to do anything about that I just didn't feel like being on earth like I literally just wanted to die like I just felt like I like I just want to die like I just don't want to like be around I want to be in that hole and I want to be buried I don't want to have any thoughts I don't want to have to face people I don't want to have to think about him I don't want to deal with life I just want to not be here and like that was something that i just literally i remember like when i was breaking down crying i would literally be like i just want to fucking die like it sucked it sucked and like it's crazy because like i'm crying about it but i'm over it but here's the thing okay let me prep let, let me say this because i don't want anybody to think that i'm trying to be deceitful or anything him and i got back together we are together to this day i I'm crying because I'm sad for myself at that time. I'm not crying because I haven't healed from it. I'm crying because I'm sad for myself at that time because I was so low and I just hurt for like that Ashley. I literally get sad when I think about that time. Um, before we got back together, I had healed. I didn't want to be with him when I was not over the situation because I accepted that we were never going to get back together and I had healed myself and I was ready and I was going on dates and I was ready to let him go in that way. Janae's album dropped, that shit was healing, and I literally just, I was ready, and I was myself again. And then the universe fucking did its thing, which I always had a feeling it would, because I'm very intuitive and I had a lot of psychic dreams, but the universe did its thing, reconnected us, and we got back together um, months later, like a, a while after, and um, I think it took me like four and a half months to heal um and even at that point i was still thinking about we'll get there we'll get there okay but i just want to say that because i don't want that to be like a secret like that we did get back together but i definitely healed and got through it i did so the next thing you're probably going to go through is asking yourself when is this going to be over like you're just going to beg god the universe whatever your beliefs are for a sign a timeline a day that you're just gonna be fucking healed and everything's gonna be better and you're literally going to be like when is this going to be over i do not feel like myself when am i going to feel like myself again when am i going to be a human again and i wanted a date so bad i'd watch endless youtube videos and just hope that someone would give me a timeline on when and how i'm gonna get better and i can talk about that if you want me to talk about that let like leave me a comment i'll make another video on it like soon i can make it in a week in a couple days as long as i just see that people care about that i can make a video on getting over heartbreak how long it takes how to do it all that stuff because like i'm here i'm alive and um yeah there's no deadline but i can talk specific months if you want just let me know okay you're gonna go through phases of like i'm a bad bitch i'm angry i'm sad i'm happy i don't need him i'm depressed i need him i miss him i want his touch 
I'm a bad bitch. It's literally gonna, <laughs> like you're gonna, you won't know where you're gonna be at for the day. You can wake up and be like, I'm a bad bitch. I don't need him. I do so much better without him. I'm gonna go find a date. I'm gonna go do this. Blah, 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 blah. And then an hour later, you're crying like, I just wish I could just smell him. I, that's what scared me when I forgot his like scent and his physical touch. Like I forgot what it was like to be like touched by him. Like I suddenly craved a hug, a, a little thing. And I was so sad. Like I would be in bed and I would just be like, oh my God, like I don't even remember what it's like to like feel him hold me. And that was really fucking depressing. And I, <laughs> if he watches this, <laughs> if you're watching this, please don't bring it up to me. <laughs> Look at me fucking crying. You're gonna go through these phases and you're gonna wanna like go out and enjoy your life. I'm like, I don't need him, let me go to the club, let me do this. I didn't even do that, I went to gay clubs. <laughs> but I remember when I was in New York and went on dates and like the second I was on the date, I was like, it's not him. Don't force yourself to do those things. Like I was not enjoying these things. Like it was just, it was not it for me. Do that when you're ready. I did it when I was ready eventually and like it was chill, it was fine, but it's still like, I still was just like, mm, I don't want to date right now. I don't want to. Had nothing to do with like me being depressed. It was more just like, I'm just not feeling this. It's not giving, it's not fulfilling me. I don't care for this person. Like this is whack. <laughs> um, but even when you're like out with your friends, you're gonna feel like you're on autopilot. It's gonna be very weird. At least it was for me because like I just, Felt like I'd be sitting there making eye contact, mm -hmm, yeah, giving them back like ad libs and like conversation. But in the back of my mind, all I'm thinking is like, I'm fucking depressed. I'm fucking depressed. What if he walks in? What would I do? I'm depressed. And that's it. Like you're able to function, but your mind is not there. You're just thinking about like, I just wish I was home right now. And it sucks. Cause like you're enjoying your time, your friends enjoying their time. So you don't say anything. Cause you're just like, how many times am I gonna bring it up? We've spent the first 20 minutes with our appetizers talking about him like, I can't bring it up again, so. And my friends are great. I'm sure I could have if I wanted to, but I just didn't want to, cause like they have their own lives. I don't I don't want to burden them. And that's the thing that sucks is that something else you'll feel is like you're burdening people, like constantly needing to be on the phone or FaceTime or have them over. And you're feeling like you're burdening them because it just feels like such a silly thing. It's just a breakup. Everybody goes through heartbreak, but like, it's just, it, it sucks. And you need your friends, you do. So like reach out, but. I know you're probably gonna feel like you're burdening them. I hope you don't. If you don't, you're very lucky. <sighs> this was the worst for me. Um, the hours would drag on. I felt like a zombie. There were there would be days that I did not want to even touch my phone. I deleted, oh, I deleted Instagram for like the duration of my breakup. I was off Instagram for about two and a half months. Completely deleted it. I think I deactivated it. No idea what was going on in the outside world. The only time I checked in was when I was in New York because I wanted to document that and like watch it later on in my life. And then I, I was on for four days and I got off again. Um, stay off social media if you can. The only thing I was on was TikTok because that shit is funny. That's the only way you can get me to laugh. TikToks. TikTok was the only thing. No, TikTok. We're going to get into what got me through it in another video. I'm sorry. I'm getting off track. There would be days that I wouldn't be on my phone though. I wouldn't be on TikTok, nothing. I would literally lie on the couch and cry until I couldn't breathe and my head hurt and my eyes were swollen and stare at the wall. That's it. Yeah, I would just stare at the wall. And I would rotate, and I would stare at the other wall. And I would rotate, and I would stare at the ceiling. And you literally wake up, and all you can think is, I can't wait for this day to be over so I can be asleep again and not be in touch with reality. And the whole day drags on, you literally wake up. I'd wake up at 7 a.m., I'd be so pissed. I'm like, at least let me sleep in, body. Like, at least let me sleep until one, so I can, like, half the day's gone. But no, I was waking up at, like, 7 a.m., and I wouldn't fall asleep until I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't sleeping. I, w <laughs> I tried. And I wasn't really sleeping. I had to do a whole routine every single night just to fall asleep. I was taking so much melatonin. I was taking Ativan. I was like, I, I couldn't sleep. I could not sleep. And I just waited for the day to be over every day. My, my goal of the day, every single day, was get through the day and let it be over and start over again. And that was it. Something that I wasn't used to was feeling vulnerable all the time around anybody. Like, I remember, like, somebody asked me what was wrong that i'm not close to and they got it out of me and i broke down and i cried in their arms and i don't do that with people <laughs> at all except for my boyfriend and my best friend maybe um i don't really do that like they're the two people that really see me cry and i did that and i just felt so vulnerable and it's like you don't even care that you're vulnerable yeah i, I was so weak i was so weak 
I couldn't eat, I couldn't drink. Um, there was a point that I went 70 hours, like three days, I think it's three days. Two and a half days, I would say, of no food. And I love my food. I did not eat, I had no appetite. Every time I ate, I just felt like I was like, like, I couldn't eat. And then um, I had to order a smoothie because I couldn't cook, I was just not feeling it. I ordered a smoothie on Uber Eats for $20 and I drank it and it was so hard to drink and yeah, other than that, I was just having water. I couldn't really do anything else. Um, I had no appetite at all. Um, and this is my last point. I actually wrote down all of these so I wouldn't forget. My last point is um, hopefully you're not like me and have dreams about them. I had a lot of dreams and I had dreams of him and I like just doing regular shit like oh we're just watching a show oh we're at Staples like it, it, it was real life dreams you know like when dreams are fucking wild you know their dreams these ones felt like real life so I just like would wake up and I would be so, I would be so happy and then I'd be like oh my god that's not real holy shit oh my god that really happened it really we really broke up and you gotta reprocess everything all over again and that was a tough one um, because like the dreams would like really play with my emotions and looking back I think they were just visions of like we're getting back together because I have psychic dreams all the time but um, at the time they just felt like the fucking universe and my mind was taunting me and it was so hard because I had those dreams like at least three times a week at least three times a week I'd have happy dream I'd have happy dreams of us and it was so hard it made it harder it made it harder um, I just remember one more thing um, something that's gonna be really difficult to get through is like them being your first person to like go to um like you're gonna feel weird because suddenly you're not texting them in the morning you're not calling them in the morning they're not the they're still the first thing you think about but now it's not happy thoughts it, it's sad thoughts associated with that so like that's hard because you wake up and you're like oh i want to text oh oh and then fuck and um when something good happens you just want to tell them the news when something bad happens you want to cry to them when someone pisses you off in your family you want to vent to them and when anything happens, you just want to be like, this is what happened, blah, 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 and just call them, but you can't do that anymore. And you have to reprocess that every single time something significant happens in your life. And that feeling is so weird because you're so used to it. And it just like, you, you don't, you can't do it anymore. And it's really strange. And yeah, those are most of the things you will experience during this time. I pray that most of you are like, oh, I don't feel most of that, and that you are having an easy time, but if I'm being realistic, I know that's probably not the case, and I'm sorry. So, you're gonna get through this, you're gonna survive, you're gonna be okay. If you need advice on how to get through it, let me know in the comments. Please don't be shy, let me know, and um, I'll talk about how to get over breakup. How to get over a breakup. Another thing I want you guys to do in the comments, if you've gone through a breakup and you've survived and you have tips, share them in the comments below because I'm telling you people need them. So please do that. The other thing I want you to do is if you're currently going through it, share your process. Like, I'm on month two and this is how I'm feeling. I'm depressed on this. I'm happy. I'm this. Like, share what you're going through. Like, what month you're on and what you're going through. What day you're on, what week you're on. Like, it could be day two. It could be hour eight. Like, just share what happened. Not what happened. Share, like, kind of what you're going through, your experience with, like, your emotions and the timeline so people kind of know what to expect um but with that being said i hope you <laughs> enjoyed i hope you gained i hope you gained some reassurance out of this video and i love you guys and i'm praying for you guys and i'm sending you positive energy let me know if you want that video though and that will come within the week i promise you i'll get that fast for you guys okay <sighs> i guess that's it good luck guys you'll get through it I promise. Bye.